because to be a bodybuilder you have it has to be your life it has to become your life you have no idea what I had to sacrifice to 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 be successful in this sport you have to sacrifice your relationships and you have to be alone if you want to be the most successful bodybuilder in the world you have to be alone you have your life has to be revolve around bodybuilding 24 hours a day seven days a week you have to eat sleep and breathe this sport or else your chances of making it have drastically decreased it's very hard I don't care what anybody says any other bodybuilder says being alone is one of the hardest things about being a bodybuilder I'm telling you, I was at the gym today, and I saw a Lonnie that I want. I saw a girl there that I wanted to fuck so hard in the ass. I just wanted to go up to her and just manhandle her, and just fucking just pick her up over my shoulder and have the hardest, roughest, sweatiest sex with her that I could ever imagine. But then, you know what? You'd have to be in a relationship with her, and that's a no-no. That's one of the hardest things about being in the gym. That's one of the hardest things about being a bodybuilder. Is being alone. But hey, I get laid. I tell you. Even if I'm not in a relationship, I get fucking laid. I don't fucking care. But it's those fucking girls in the gym, you can't have every fucking girl in the world, but, you know. You gotta pick your spots, kid. You know? Cause I'm a grown man. Nobody's gonna tell me what to do, you know? But I tell you right now... <sighs> bodybuilding's a sport where you're gonna need... You're gonna need all the heart and will and strength and muscles in the world. It's gonna take everything you have spiritually, mentally, physically... It's going to take everything. Because I've been doing this for years. I've been bodybuilding for, for over 10 years now. And I'm telling you, you never get used to the pain. You never get used to it. You, you don't get used to it. Because as well as having physical strength and having a great physique, you, you have to have will and, and a heart. You, your heart has to be a big... Your goals have to be what drives you to get out of bed. Your goals have to have to will you to walk 10 miles. As well as being physical and having a great physique. You need that plus you need to have heart and you need to have an, a, a will of iron. A will of iron. A mind of stone? Not Not really. You don't need a mind of stone. You have to you have to have a mind that's willing to learn. You have to you have to want to learn in bodybuilding because you're going to be learning a lot. You have to be the kind of person that wants to go out and learn things. And and you, and you have to be self-motivated. You have to motivate yourself if nobody else is going to motivate you. You have to look for ways to motivate yourself through by any means necessary. You have to look for ways. And I'm telling you, there's going to be times when you're in that gym or working out to a level where where you are going to be so beaten, not defeated, beaten. Your body's going to feel like you can't even move. I'm telling you right now, I was at the gym today and my spine felt like it's been torn out of my lower back. It was difficult to do anything in there because I've already been in the gym yesterday which was Friday I've been in there Friday I've been in there Wednesday I've been in there Sunday so this is the pattern right here Sunday to Wednesday to Friday Saturday Sunday are the days that I'm in the gym I think I was even in there on Tuesday I think I was there Tuesday I'm not uh, I'm not sure. I think it was Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
But my regular schedule would be let's let's begin from from the beginning of the week. It's Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's about that's about four days of being in the gym. And it could be anywhere from two hours to six hours. Did you read that? Did you get that? I would I would be in there for two to six hours. And I'm telling you right now, if you think that's easy, then you go and try it. A relentless workout targeting every body part at maximum intensity around in a place full of people who don't belong there. I'm the only bodybuilder in the gym that I go to, okay? There needs to be more bodybuilders in our gyms, okay? Because we're the motivators. We have to motivate all these people who don't even want to work out. They have no they have no motivation. I don't even know why they're there. I don't know why they're there. Can somebody explain that to me? Can somebody explain to me why these people are in, in the gym? They're, they're lazy. They're more concerned about cleaning the machines than fucking working out. They're more concerned about talking about football, which has nothing to do with being in the gym whatsoever, than they are about talking about anything else. What the fuck is the matter with these people? I wanted to fucking punch one of these motherfuckers in the fucking face, okay? But that would be a waste of time. That's a waste of my time. Every single second I walk in that gym is geared towards the goal I had 10 years ago. I still have the desire and the hunger that I that in in this sport of bodybuilding that I did 10 years ago and I've already had my results. I have my results right now. But it's the passion that keeps me working hard in that gym as well as everything else. I have all the strength in the world. I have all I have the greatest physique. My goals are already attained. I feel great about my life. But I'm telling you right now, passion is the reason why I go to the gym. Because I, I love to lift weights. I love bodybuilding. Lifting weights is part of bodybuilding. That doesn't mean you're a weightlifter. I'm a bodybuilder. My only primary focus in that gym is to attain a pump in every body part. And even if I get a pump in just one body part, whether it just be, if I get a pump in my biceps during a six hour session, that's enough for me. I want to get a muscle swelling pump. That's one of my, that's, that's my, my primary goal every time I set foot in the gym. From the time I step in there to the time I leave, my only goal is to get a pump. I don't I don't consider it to be pain. I don't consider it to be soreness. I consider it to be a pump. That's what it's called in bodybuilding. That's what that soreness and that pain is. That's that's called a pump. And I just want to bring up something about wrestling. You know the wrestler Biggie Langston? These people are so stupid that they don't even know what the chalk on his hands means as part of his gimmick. That's that's not just part of his gimmick. Biggie Langston is a power lifter. I've seen these guys before in the gym. That chalk is to ensure that your grip is very tight against the free weight bar when you're doing heavy deadlifts. But there's some people that need it and there's some people that don't need the chalk. And these people just look at it and they think that it's just a guy with chalky hand big guy with chalky hands slapping his hands together. That chalk means something. It means something. They they just don't don't think it means nothing because they've never been in a gym and seen that before. I've been in 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 a lot of gyms and I've and I've been to one where I've seen the these power lifters use that chalk and I I don't mind that they use it. I think it's a good thing. They're trying to ensure that they can lift that bar without it slipping. And believe me, I'm I've been bodybuilding for ten years, but I don't use the chalk. I can do the power lifting that they can do. But I don't like to use the chalk. There's some people that do. It's a preference, whether you do or don't. You know, that's 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 just like a security device. You know, that that chalk. 
you don't want to have your grips, uh, your sweaty p uh, palms when you're uh, doing a, a heavy deadlift. And trust me on that. You don't want any part of your body to be sweating when you're on these machines because you might slip off. It happened to me today. I was trying to do leg, I was doing leg presses, and the sweat. I I was so sweaty that I that I almost slipped off the machine, and and the whole thing just just toppled. That's why that's why when I'm sweaty like that, I'm very particular about what leg ex exercises I do. I'll do leg extensions, I'll do hamstring leg extensions to at curl in curls, seated. I'll do squats. I'll do some. I'll do calf raises when I'm sweaty like that. You know, then I I don't like the, the some the the machines when you're doing these leg exercises have to be calibrated a certain way. The range of motion has to be very particular, and I don't like to use some of these leg machines. That's just my preference. I get a good leg workout no matter what. I could do front squats with no weights and get a good leg workout. I could do 200 reps. I've done done it today. I did 250, 250 reps, just 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 regular squats, just just you know squatting up and down, no no weight at all, nothing on my back, just just basic Hindu squats, and that's and, and I do a lot of those. It's like it's like warming up your leg to get a pump, you know. I warm up my legs that way, and then I go from that and I do leg extensions, squats. <sighs> calf raises, you know, the whole shebang, you do it all, I do it all, Every, and tomorrow is Sunday, and I'll be in there again, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm in so much pain, it, it feels like the my, the my spine and my lower back torn out of my, is torn out of my, my spine is torn out of my lower back, and believe me, when you're in so much, when your lower back is in that much pain, it makes it shock waves through your entire body. It makes everything more difficult to do. It makes it a hundred times harder. My joints and my arms are getting there. They feel like they're torn. The joints in my arms feel like they're torn. My back is so sore. Even my upper back and my middle back. Even even my even my traps all sore. But I'm still gonna be in there tomorrow. I want to finish up tomorrow, but you know I'll be back. I'll be back in there uh, next Friday, Cause, or or even Tuesday. I might be in there in in the gym next Tuesday. So that's what I just wanted to say. This video voice log is about the trials of bodybuilding, but I'm telling you right now from a person who's been doing it for 10 years, all the pain, everything that you go through in that gym is worth it. Believe me. All the being alone, all the all the meals that that is so hard to to even find the money to pay for these meals. You just got to do the best you can. You don't have to eat eight to ten meals a day. You could eat two meals a day, and just eat a lot during those two meals, and it'll equate to eight to ten small meals. There's nobody that can eat eight to ten large meals a day, because you know you just don't have the money for it. You might have the appetite for it, but Man, a lot of people. I'm. I don't have the. I'm. I'm not gonna have the appetite for that. It's not that that I can't eat eight to ten large meals a day. It's just that you don't have the money for it. So then you got to think smart. You got to eat smart. You know, because in bodybuilding it's a lot different than powerlifting. Ryback is a powerlifter. He eats like a powerlifter. You know that he eats eight to ten meals a day. But in bodybuilding it's different. In bodybuilding, it's it's more about a selective choice of what you eat, and you have to be very selective about your diet. Like for my diet, for example, I eat a lot of uh, a lot of grains, a lot of uh, a lot of fried chicken. I go to KFC a lot, and I eat a lot of chicken. Whether it's grilled, extra crispy, doesn't matter. You'll work it out in the gym. It'll all come out in, in the sweat that you do, and I sweat a lot. So it doesn't make a difference if it's fried or whatever. Just the chicken, your body's going to process that. The energy from that chicken is going to make your skin tighter. It's And that's important in bodybuilding. It's very important. That's why we all eat uh, chicken. It's so important. It's and, and and I try to I try to spread it out. I eat a lot of beef too. I eat a lot of everything. 
I try. I try to eat a lot of carbs for energy. I don't care what any other bodybuilder says, but you have to have carbs. They're important to, to in, in making you shredded and look larger and have the energy for your mu muscles and the glycogen during your workout. It's very important. And a lot of these bodybuilders say they don't eat carbs because they want to look shredded. You know, but you need carbs. It's important. I look shredded and hard too. And I look big and I eat carbs. I eat pizza maybe two times a week. I eat a lot of pizza. You know? Pizza is one of the staples of my diet. Pizza, chicken, beef, a lot of beef burgers, triple beef burgers. You know, I, I eat a lot of that. A lot. And it's not 8 to 10 meals a day. You can eat only 2 meals, but it just make sure you eat a lot. It'll all even itself out. Trust me. You see my bodybuilding videos. You see what I look like. I eat however I want. you got to listen to your body. That's what I do. Trust me. When you start getting up there in years in bodybuilding, you're going to you're gonna realize what I'm saying about listening to your body. It's going to become an instinct, just like it did with me. In, in the beginning, when I was when I was bodybuilding, you know, it was much more difficult difficult to listen to your body. It's like you put cotton in your ears, but then over the years, that cotton starts to disintegrate, and then you start to hear it a lot more. Trust me. If you stay in bodybuilding for ten years, I guarantee you, I can promise you, you're going to listen to your body. Once you get results in this sport. Listen to your body is going to become like an instinct. It's going to become like a sixth sense. Just like it did with me. Listening to my body is one of the most important things that I've learned in bodybuilding. You know, because it's going to, it's going to really, it's going to come a long way. Trust me. It's going to be that instinct of what you have to do with yourself. It's going to become like an instinct and you can't turn it off. It's going to drive you. It's going to tell you what to eat. It's going to tell you how to train. It's going to tell you when not to train to, to recover. And you're going to get larger because of it. Resting is important. I try to get I get 8 to 12 hours of sleep a day. I get a lot of sleep. I, I mainly would go to sleep either at 8 or 9 o'clock at night. I don't stay up all night and party. You can't be a partier if you want to be a bodybuilder. I'm I'm the greatest bodybuilder in the world because I take the sport so seriously. I take the sport as seriously as a heart attack. Do you hear me? I take the sport as seriously as a heart attack. I give it 120% in everything I do in every aspect of the sport. These are the sacrifices you have to make in order to be a great bodybuilder. You could either be a bodybuilder or, or a powerlifter. Or a bodybuilder and a powerlifter. They're, 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 like, they're like very close brothers. You know, bodybuilding and powerlifting. Powerlifters eat a different diet than bodybuilders. They're very similar. But powerlifters eat a lot more of different foods than bodybuilders. Bodybuilders are more selective in what they eat. And... And that's what it comes in the long run. Because in bodybuilding, it's more difficult than powerlifting. Powerlifters can eat anything they want. But they're going to eat it in large quantities. Like powerlifters will eat 8 to 10 meals a day. A bodybuilder, all they have to be concerned about is following a, a, a meal regimen. 8 to 10 meals a day doesn't doesn't have is not feasible for everybody. It's not everybody's budget is not going to be able to accommodate 8 to 10 meals a day. So what I do is I spread out my meals like in in the morning I I, I eat a big meal and then I go to the gym and work it off. That's what I do. I've been doing that for 10 years and then after my workout I eat a lot again and then I go to bed. And then wake up and do the same thing over again. I wake up early, maybe 9 or 10 o'clock. And I do that. I've been doing it for 10 years. I just try to eat a lot of, of and, and to what my budget can accommodate. It's not easy, believe me. Bodybuilding is not easy for somebody who does not make a lot of money. But you just got to do the best you can, and I promise you'll be successful. You just have to have the will 
to, to go out and get a job. And believe me, juggling a job and being a bodybuilder is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. And doing all three, juggling a, a job, being a bodybuilder, and being in a relationship with a girl is that the trifecta that's very hard to do bodybuilding to be if you just want to be a bodybuilder you can do all three of those things but if you want to be a great bodybuilder if you want to be a bodybuilder who's successful then you have to you have to give your life to the sport you have to eat sleep breathe think Everything around your entire life has to revolve around bodybuilding. It's a sport, and it's also a lifestyle. It's more a lifestyle than it is a sport. But it's also a great sport, and it's known as a sport, because it is a sport. And I love this sport so much that I'd give my life for it. I'd give my life in a heartbeat for bodybuilding. It's given me so much. It gave me my life back. Bodybuilding saved my life. Do you hear me? And this is absolutely from the heart. As God is my witness, bodybuilding saved my life. It saved my life. I don't know where I'd be without it. And I look into this camera right now, and that's the God honest truth. Bodybuilding saved my life. And I'm talking from the heart. Everything before this I was talking for the heart too, but... Believe me, there's been many times when I wanted to just, to just cry because the passion just got to a boiling point in me. For this sport, I sacrificed everything. I sacrificed everything in my life to be, to be the greatest bodybuilder in the world. I, I trained to be the best. If you want to be a bodybuilder or you just want to be a weightlifter, there's a lot of weightlifters that go to the gym, but rarely do I ever see another bodybuilder like me. And if I see another bodybuilder, I have the most respect for them. And the way that you respect another bodybuilder is just to leave them alone. Because trust me, and this is coming from me, a bodybuilder myself, all we want to do is be left alone and do our routine. We don't want you coming up to us and talking to us or shaking our hands or any of that. You could shake our hands. That's okay. But don't talk to us because you're distracting us. We need 120% focus in there. And believe me, it's already, it's already hard enough as it is. We don't need you coming up to us and talking to us and distracting us. It's even harder, man. Because believe me, anywhere outside the gym, man, anytime... Outside of that gym, I'll fuck all the girls in the world. I'll fuck that tight pussy. I'll fuck that tight pussy with my big dick. Anywhere outside the gym. I gotten laid I've gotten laid before. But in that gym, you have to you have to be one hundred and twenty percent focused on the task at hand. You can't let them distract you in there. Only in there. Anywhere else, it's okay. They could all the, the girls could talk to me as long as they want. They could suck my dick. They could ride my cock in my house. We could have sweaty sex, both of us naked. Me and the girl. Having hot butt sex with her all night. Our sweat could join together once we rub bodies together. My penis sliding into her vagina all night. And then afterwards... She could suck my dick in the morning. We'll get dressed. We'll leave the house. I'll get my meals. But when I step into that gym, the world is turned off. We're, I'm in a whole new zone that you couldn't possibly be able to comprehend. You have to be a bodybuilder to understand what I'm talking about here. And any other bodybuilder that's listening to this, I know they'd understand what I mean. You have to be in a level of focus. You have to set the highest standard for yourself that, that nobody else can set. 
You have to train at a level that nobody else can train at. And the more those other people are lazy, the more it motivates you to train even harder. Because their laziness is unacceptable. And it, that anger inside of you has to be has to be unleashed on those weights. And every single exercise you do in that gym, every single step and breath you take has to be motivated towards the goal that you had 10 years ago to be the best. To be the greatest bodybuilder in the world. To have all the cuts and all the size. To have the, all the strength in the world. To do everything that you wanted to do has to all be concentrated into one ball of energy in that gym and it has to be unleashed it has to be unleashed for two to six hours or however long you, you be in there even for an hour I've had workouts in an hour that equaled any other person in that gym in five days would not be able to to have one workout that I had in an hour it would not be able to equal that hour that I had in there because I concentrate it, I concentrate the workout to a, a to a level that just makes your whole body pump. You have to pump your mind before you go in there and pump your body. You have to motivate yourself to a level that nobody else can get to. And it's very hard, believe me. That's why that's why not a lot of people can make it in this sport. It requires everything. It's going to require everything about you to be elevated to the maximum level. Spiritually, physically, mentally, you're going to need all of it. Heart, will, determination, sacrifice, power, being alone. You're going to learn a lot about yourself as a man in this sport more than any other sport not football, soccer, basketball, running track, diving, or anything. In bodybuilding, you will learn more about yourself in this sport than in any other sport. I can promise you that. I can promise you that. You are going to you're going to have times when you're so alone that it hurts. Believe me, but that's the that's the price that's the sacrifice that you have to make to be the best. Look at any other, uh, uh, and uh, look at any other bodybuilder. We're in the top league. There's nobody that can be in our league. Like, in, nobody can be in my league. Nobody can be in Kai Green's league. Nobody can be in Victor Martinez's league. Nobody can be in, in, in Jay Cutler's league. They're we're the elite. We're the elite. Nobody can be in our league. We're in a league of our own. We're in a league of our own because we gave everything. We sacrificed everything for the sport. Everything. To the point where the passion just gets to a boiling point where the tears just flow out of your eyes and you don't even realize they're coming out. Now that's a hardcore bodybuilder. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how much they want to say they're otherwise they could shove it up their ass what what their fucking negative opinions are if I had listened to any of these people 10 years ago I would have never got to the level I'm at I listened to myself I always had faith that I would make it I knew that I'd get to the level I'm at because I, I never let anyone tell me that I couldn't do something I never let anyone tell me I wasn't going to get to the level that I wanted to get to I fucking did what I had to do to be the best. I pushed myself to to training that you couldn't ever, you couldn't even last five minutes doing my workout routine. I I guarantee you, you wouldn't last five minutes in my world. You couldn't walk in my shoes for a day. None of you people could walk in my shoes for a day. I don't care what you say. I don't then prove it to me. Prove it to me that you could walk in my shoes for a day and I'll take you through a day with me and then let's see if you could survive a day in my world. You won't be able to do it. You won't be able, won't be able to do it, man. There's been days when I just gave it so much in the gym that I couldn't even move. 
There's been days when I've trained legs so hard that I could barely move my legs. It felt like a, a Mack truck just slowly ran over my legs. You have no idea the kind of pain that I've been through. I've had times when I trained so hard that I physically, it was the, one of the hardest things I had to do was just to get out of bed in the morning. And then I had to go back and do it all over again in the gym. Even with all that pain, I still went in there with my legs feeling like they were compounded by a Mack truck wheels running over my legs. And if now you want to talk to me about being a hardcore bodybuilder, you people have not even fucking even seen the tip of the iceberg of how hard it's going to get. If you want to be a bodybuilder, whether you're going to be a great bodybuilder or just a bodybuilder, being a bodybuilder is a prestigious honor. And somebody like Kai Green can tell you the story just as well as I can of what he had to go through to fucking get to where he's at or what I had to go through to get where I'm at and believe me this sport is going to test you it's going to test you mentally physically and spiritually you're going to discover God in this sport because you're gonna need every ounce of spiritual assistance possible to get through this and I and, and and I know that God and Jesus Christ is on my side. You know? They were the only ones on my side. Because everybody else was a detractor. Of course, yeah, they're detractors when you're when you're trying to get somewhere. But ha when you notice when you get those results, man, ten years later, oh now they're now they keep their mouth shut now. Now now the game has totally fucking changed. This was never a game. It's not a game to me. This is a, a serious business. I go into that gym like I'm going to war. I'm going into I go into every gym or do every workout that I do like I'm going into the Iraq war, okay? That's the way that I see it. This is not this is not a game. This is not a play game to me. This is, I take it as seriously as a heart attack. And that's an understatement. I can't even put to you the way that I, that I take it. Because there's no words to describe it. You have to fucking see the workout for yourself. You have to, you have to be in my skin to understand the way that I take and that workout seriously. You have no conception about it. You have to walk in my shoes. It's not easy and this life is not for everybody but it's the only life for me it's the only life for me